DFM, DFM rocks. Bula Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suba. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, police report lodged against Bulitabu. Bulitavu apologizes and calls made to remove Bulitavu from Sadelpa. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Saga. The Fiji Human Rights Commission Director Ashwin Raj has filed a police report against Sadelpa MP Mosesem Bulitavu. This was confirmed to FBC News by the Commission Director Ashwin Raj and he says the report was filed in his capacity as a private citizen. Ali Kimbea with the story. Eswin Rods claimed that Mbulitavu was inciting hatred towards the Indo-Fijian community on the basis of ethnicity and gender. I think somebody needs to stand up and do something about it. And if our laws are saying that you have the constitutional right to be protected against hate speeches, then, well, somebody needs to enforce it. Raj says this is not the first time this type of racial vilification has been done to the Indo-Fijian community. This is also in light of the fact that the attacks on the Indo-Fijian community is actually quite rampant now. I mean, they've been the target of racist jibes um, uh, for the last few weeks. He says Mbulitavo needs to face the consequences of his actions. If this very powerful person gets away with it, I think it just encourages every citizen of this country to go out and say the most racist, the most hateful stuff against men, women, children and get away with it because if the powerful can get away with it, anybody can. The Human Rights Commission director says Fiji must unite and guard our hard-fought constitutional right to be called Fijians despite our race, ethnicity, gender, color or creed or economic status. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Sadelpa is now under immense pressure as to what actions they will take against Moses and Bulitabu's racist remarks. Bulitabu was given a directive last night by the party president, Ro Filipe Tuisawao, to apologize to those he offended. Ali Kimbia with the story. It's highly likely Bulitabu will face the consequences of his actions after Ro Tuisawao has made it clear that racist remarks will not be tolerated by the party. So, but for us, it's, it's very clear that, you know, that uh, the kind of statements which uh, insinuates uh, something uh, racial is not in line with party policy. FBC News has made several calls to Ro Filipe questioning what disciplinary actions will be taken against Mbulitavo. However, the newly appointed president says no decision has yet been made. With party leader Sitiveni Rambuka being silent on the issue, Ro Filippi says Sodelpa's stance on racism is clear. It's, uh, in our constitution and uh, in our manifesto, Sodelpa is uh, inclusive. And if uh, there's uh, statements which are, you know, which are clearly racist, of course we, we don't agree with it. Eh? Meanwhile, in his apology, Mbulitabu writes, I apologize unreservedly to those who have been offended by my comments, in particular to the women of Fiji and also the Indo-Fijian community. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Calls have been made for opposition member of parliament, Moses Mbulitabu, to resign from his position. This comes after Mbulitabu made bigotry and racist remarks against the Indo-Fijian community. Kritika Kumar reports. Some of the religious organizations have condemned the remarks and have called for appropriate actions. I, I, I think he should forthwith resign from his position, number one, and an appropriate investigation be carried out against him because this is a very far reaching, this has a very far reaching implication. You know, we respect women and we try and make sure that they are respected and, and they are uplifted in society. And this kind of comment, these kind of comments are not helping. This man should be pulled, pulled up. I don't know what the uh, legal avenues are, but obviously if they are one, I would say that the, uh, the authorities should be looking into it. Minister for Youth and Sports Parvin Kumar has labelled the comments as cheap, which were aimed at damaging racial relations. 
deserves to be condemned in the most direct manner uh, for his racist and demeaning comments directed at Fijians of Indian origin, in particular our hard-working rural women. Minister for Trade and Tourism Premila Kumar last night also publicly criticized the post made by the Member of Parliament. We should not accept it. Parvin Kumar says if this is his opinion, he does not deserve to hold the esteemed position as an MP or public leader. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The 2019 Pacific Update brought together a number of academics and practitioners to discuss a range of issues affecting the region. With the various panels, there were a number of examples shared that could easily be used here in Fiji and other Pacific Island countries to improve communities and the quality of life. Maggie Boyle reports. Facebook, which is huge, is got everything to gain from the Pacific and is contributing nothing. With close to 100 presentations, there were many takeaways that could be put into use. There have been great examples of how local businesses uh, have been successful, how uh, indigenous businesses have been successful, how ideas from local villages and, and uh, indigenous knowledge have been used uh, to benefit communities. We are still a farmer and, and provide finance so they can so they can have green houses and irrigation system. It's all about water management. You know, you, you, you manage your water properly, the plants will grow properly. The role of agriculture should be also linked with the tourism sector. Uh, the hotels should be provided by with the local commodities rather than having team player and, uh, and uh, beaches uh, opened up. The 2019 Pacific Update, which was open to the public, also looked at some of the downsides of development. Local communities, it comes up time and time and time again. Um, that So people were complaining that chief's authority and customary forms of avoidance and respect between kin were being undermined that people were becoming more selfish and money-oriented. Three or four people, uh, three or four in a worker, will have to actually hire an accountant to deal with those. And it's very costly. So that, 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 those are the kinds of things that government has to look at. The balance, how do we manage effectively some of the issues? And as Rachel herself uh, mentioned, and um, uh, to the other speakers also um, reiterated, there's this need to strengthen you know, areas of improvement where we can. The three-day event wrapped up yesterday with co-conveners, the University of the South Pacific and the Australian National University focused on the next chapter. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Up ahead, cane lorry drivers urge to follow weight limit. And Lorchen wins Senior Manager of the Year Award details after the break. Bola, go e minuni mereka rakyat yang betul tak ada orang yang boleh faham namun dua nasib. Membola, saya wo meli, saya wo titiu mai mata niway, anda tak lihat kan orang orang yang boleh faham. Untuk tu kami orang yang serius wo yang boleh faham namun dua nasib yang suka. Ini sambil belakang lebih binti, gong alu melintau ni lebih empat. Saya unganggu emosi bola yang rokok rokok untuk tak lihat kan orang orang yang boleh faham. Bola FM, namun dua nasib. Bola FM, nampak dua nasib. Cane lorry operators in Lambasa are urged to stay within the legal weight limit while delivering cane to the sugar mill. The plea comes from the Lambasa Cane Lorry Operators Association following a meeting with the FSC in Lambasa today. Eleanor Durangayvu reports. Come Monday, the grace period given by the Land Transport Authority to cane lorry operators to comply with weight restrictions ends. We have not been given uh, like anything whether we will be booked or something like that but we want our drivers to follow the law, don't break it, so that you are not booked. We are trying to follow the restriction of, you know, width and height. The Cane Lorry Operators Association met with the Lambasa Mill manager today to try and iron out a few issues, including weight restrictions for the bigger cane trucks. The weight of the truck itself is 9 tons, so they are being given a very small amount of cane to be carried on the road. So these people will be not making any money. Maybe they will be the ones who will pull out from the road. But they, we don't want that to happen. 
A meeting has now been set for the 11th of this month with the Fiji Sugar Corporation, the Land Transport Authority and the Fiji Roads Authority where the association will plead its case. That meeting has been held on, in Lautoka, so we'll be going there. Maybe we'll get some positive answer from there regarding our operations on the road. For now, FSC is urging the lorry drivers to continue to bring cane to the mill. <laughs> Cane lorry operators have for years been exempt from the weight restrictions given out by the LTA. But this year the LTA is putting its foot down, saying the weight limits have to be adhered to. Eleanor Turanga View, FBC News. Our very own Fiji Broadcasting Corporation's radio programs manager, Shami Lochen, was awarded the Best Senior Manager of the Year Award in the Public Sector at the Women in Business Awards last night. While receiving her award, Lochin says it was a challenging competition in this year's WIB Awards, as other finalists also worked hard, striving to be the best. Senior Boiler reports. The Senior Manager of the Year Public Sector is... Congratulations, Shami Lochin. Hello, Chan. Thank the FBC Chief Executive Ria Said Kayum as well as her husband for the endless support at work and at home. And um, I'd like to offer my gratitude and thank you so much for being the best boss. And to my husband, Puran Lal. You know what? I haven't cooked for about six months. I don't cook dinner. Uh, you went out of your way and to make me feel very comfortable. Uh, thank you for all the compromises. Women in Business President Dr. Nurbano Ali says the awards night is a great time to recognize the hard work and the achievements of women in the business sector. These women, ladies and gentlemen, have powered through competition, sexism, misogyny, and in many cases, lots of compromises and difficult choices in life to come out on top and therefore are truly deserving of celebration tonight. Lochen is the radio program's manager who looks after our very own six radio stations at FBC, which includes Cold FM, Today FM, Bula FM, Radio Fiji 1, Radio Fiji 2, and Mirichi FM. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Women in Business has the opportunity now to ensure that the next generation inherits an environment that will address all issues facing women. While officiating at the Women in Business Awards last night, guest speaker Sadna Smile says it's crucial to recognize the work done by rural women. Senia Nimboila once again. Leader, podcast. Smile says helping young women to achieve greater things should be a common goal for individuals who are part of the WIB. We have a number of expat brands and managers in the room. If you were to aspire to leave behind a legacy, it should be one that defines the path in creating diverse workplaces that become a model for the rest of the country. She adds rural women should not be forgotten as they play a crucial role in societies. These women are the backbone of these societies. They look after their husbands, their children, their parents and their in-laws and often are actively involved in market gardening. However, even at village level, men are in control of the decision-making process and the women. Minister for Women, Mersene Vuniwanga, thanked the effort by WIB by recognizing the work done by women in previous years until to date. Women in business to the ministry, it's a strong partner, a strong partner for women's economic empowerment in Fiji. And it's to organizations like this that government looks to, to complement the work that government does in this area. The Women in Business was established in 1998 to help promote and encourage women in business from the start of their career to the most senior levels of commerce in both the private and public sector. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Stray dogs that were caught during the Ministry of Agriculture's stray dog control program were put up for adoption today. Clinic, clinic and shelter manager Chanel Narayan says in the first week of the operation, 100 dogs were caught in Suva, of which 80 were sheltered at the SPCA in Walo Bay. He adds one of the main aims of the adoption was to provide a home for the animals as the SPCA can cater for around 120 dogs only. The Agriculture Ministry is undertaking an intensive stray dog control program in collaboration with the Ministry of Local Government, Police and Animal Welfare Organizations. 
Shelter capacity actually is 150 animals, including dogs and cats. We can keep up to 120 uh, dogs. Uh, at the moment, we have around 100 dogs in the shelter. So we are really like reaching the maximum capacity right now. For the first time, the Fiji military forces and the United States military will conduct bilateral training. Lieutenant Colonel Fred Miller from U.S. Army says training together will enhance mutual skills and the relationship between the two countries. Catherine Krishna reports. Lieutenant Colonel Fred Miller from U.S. Army says the training will also prepare local military officers to respond quickly to natural disasters. A disaster response for the U.S. Army within the Pacific is a priority to help all of our partners and, and um, other countries here in the region. And the skill sets are very comparable and resident within military forces because it's about managing large-scale operations. It's about moving people and equipment, providing aid and support to communities. Mila says they are looking forward to the training. In the past, we've been able to provide smaller types of Army elements that would come over and work in very specialized skill sets. Uh, in conjunction with the Fijian Army, but this will be the first time that we bring approximately 300 combined soldiers together to participate in bilateral training. Major Tui Nambavata from RFMF says they'll learn how they can improve disaster evacuation techniques. It's going to improve our interoperability. You know, we, we've worked with the Australians, we've worked with the New Zealand Army. This is a chance, an opportunity for our soldiers to work with the Americans. It's going to improve our processes. They'll learn more on training, they'll learn more on planning. 150 Army officers from Fiji and 150 from the U.S. military will be part of this program. The program will run from 21st of this month and end on 12th August in Vanualevu. Catherine Krishna, ABC News. Ahead in sports, Nanunga wins fair, brother. And tremendous welcome for Team Fiji in Samoa. That's after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm CLI from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. It was a tough fair brother challenge for the Nandi side as they went down to Nandrunga 20-3. Aminoni Nasilasila showed brilliant performance throughout the match. Nandrunga led Nandi 10-3 at halftime as Apisalome Wangatamu scored the opener for the Stallions. Nandrunga last had the fair brother trophy with them in 2017. Reps at Tefana Sumoda admits that this was a tough game despite their win. We knew coming in to challenge this uh, fair brother it will be tough. But the boys delivered today. We made uh, some mistakes. We'll go back and we'll work on our mistakes in uh, our preparation for the next challenge uh, next week. Suva is now the next challenger and will have their attempt to the title next week. The Pacific Games will officially open tomorrow, but the fun has started. Team Fiji athletes and officials were the centre of attraction today at the flag-raising ceremony where they were joined Solo Solo primary school students who adopted Fiji. Aquila Dama, who is in Apia, Samoa, with the details. Of Solo Solo Primary School in Apia started Team Fiji's Pacific Games campaign today in style after the flag raising ceremony. It's a special moment for the school's head teacher who says they wanted to adopt Fiji as 12 schools had made their submissions, but Solo Solo Primary was selected. I was in Fiji for four years 93, 94, 95, 96. I was in a group of the seminary in Suwa. That's why I was so happy when. Uh, the school committee adopted my school to represent Fiji. These youngsters had weeks to prepare, and Year 7 student Velasi Filippo says they are pleased with how they performed, but didn't expect Team Fiji to join them. 
We were doing practicing dancing and singing the national anthem and practicing cheers. And we are happy that we are supporting Fiji. Filippo has also learned a few Fijian words as part of the Pacific Games Adopt a Country program. Fefere langi langi pula vinakava kalevu and niza mode and takimanta. Even Chef Dimision Patrick Bauer joined the fun as well. In Apia, Aquilavama, FBC Sports. Team Fiji faced some accommodation issues at the Pacific Games in Samoa. More than 200 national athletes and officials are now at the Games Village, but Chef de Mission Patrick Bauer says issues that were brought to their attention included security and lack of washrooms. But Bauer adds Samoa has to be commended for their efforts they had, as they had little time to prepare after Tonga pulled out. Well, Aquila Dama joins us live now from the Games Village in Apia with the latest from Team Fiji. Aquila, what is the update from your end? Talofa Amrita has, uh, of course, it's uh, quite windy as well out here at the uh, Games Village at uh, Faleula in uh, Apia. And uh, also, um, just to uh, open uh, the uh, live cross offer tomorrow, the opening ceremony will be held at Apia Park and there is more than 2,000 uh, school children who will be uh, taking part and uh, it will be the first opening ceremony in the history of the Pacific Games to be held on Sunday. Now, just to your question on the update, I'm uh, fortunate to have uh, with me this um, uh, evening the uh, chef de mission for Team Fiji, Mr. Patrick Bauer. He just came back from uh, an event with the, um, um, with the Australian High Commission and uh, he's here as well uh, with me but uh, as you can see at, in the background the team Fiji section managers are having their meeting the first first meeting since they arrived yesterday now mr. Bauer just an update uh, to the um, uh, earlier issues that uh, was faced by team Fiji uh, in regards to the um, uh, accommodation and transportation I understand it has been sorted now it definitely has the uh, the committee that is planning the opening ceremony I believe have worked really around the clock to make sure that they've done the best that they uh, can do on their part not are we catering for all the great entertainment uh, we're also catering for over 5,000 athletes it's the biggest Pacific Games ever and it uh, was a surprising number of increases that came towards the end uh, closer to the games than prepared for at the initial stages of uh, coming. However, having said that, everyone's excited about the opening. All VIPs are being collected from their hotels early enough, so there's no uh, uh, overwhelming supply of vehicles at the, at the stadium, so things can flow. We start moving at about 3.30 in the afternoon tomorrow to head off down to um, Apia Park. We need to be at the gates by 6.30. Um, so that they can get us in and uh, seated shortly after six. That would mean the march into the opening ceremony. We've been told that the whole program will be three hours. They have had several rehearsals, and may I ask, thorough rehearsals, uh, albeit during the very cold weather and rain, um, they've carried on with their um, preparations to make sure that they had everything timed and that they were going to see that this event would be a very special event so far as the opening is concerned. They've also taken into account that uh, the athletes and officials need to be in in the beginning rather than at the end for the triumphant march into the into the arena uh, so we're going to be comfortable to enjoy the event the opening is not only for those at home to and those in the grandstand and the public at large it's especially put on i believe for the athletes and for all their effort so they're going to be comfortably seated after their grand entry so that all um, will be able to enjoy what Samoa has, has prepared. Going by any means of, uh, of judgment as to how it's going to be, 
We had an amazing flag raising ceremony today. I have never seen a flag raising ceremony with so much meaning involving the school children and, and really um, it was a flag raising ceremony to be remembered and had so much meaning and I think it meant a lot to those of us who were involved. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bauer, and uh, that is the latest uh, from uh, Team Fiji and as far as the campaign for the Pacific Games 2019 is concerned. Amrita. Thank you, Akula. It all sounds very, very exciting. It was a proud moment for Matuisela Railumu today as he was part of the celebrations that honoured three of his daughters for their hard work within the Thailevu women's rugby team. Railumu, who is a father of five, went against traditions and customs to support his daughters in something they love doing, rugby. Faria Begum has more on this. Matuisela Railumu had nothing but praises for his three daughters who were part of the Thailevu women's rugby team. It's, uh, you know, it's against the tradition. Custom to have uh, women playing, but uh, we see as a platform, as a for encouragement to all the ladies to come and play rugby. The youngest of the lot, Salaseni Railumu, says she was happy to play alongside her older sisters. We've been working together since we were kids. We play rugby at home with our cousins and our brothers. The eldest of the pack, Susana Railumu, showed appreciation towards the support given by her parents. Very supportive. And they watch uh, every game. Like every Saturday. The Thai-level women's team defeated the Nanonga side 43-10 to in the Skipper Cup women's final. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Yasawa has successfully defended the Benimarama Shield after they thrashed Ovala 31-3 in Churchill Park last night. Yasawa team manager Manasa Takala says it's all about management and hard work. He says the only message that he gave to the boys was to work hard and follow the game plan. The tries for Yasawa were scored by Inia Rokumatu, Michaeli Sivo, Joneta Noa and Eliki Naikusa. Lotoka will now be the next challenger. Pakistan, even after defeating Bangladesh by 94 runs, have failed to book a spot in the Cricket World Cup semi-final. Now the forecast to midnight tomorrow for the Fiji group. The cloudy periods with brief showers about the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. It was fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. Looking at the west, cloudy and humid conditions were experienced during the day, but some showers affected the division by the afternoon. And as we travel eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, it was rainy at times with cool conditions. For the north, it was fine apart from afternoon or evening showers. At sea, rough to very rough seas elsewhere, moderate to fresh easterly winds, gusty at times, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, a low tide will be at 4.10pm with high tide at 10.02am. Sunrise will be at 6.41. For tomorrow, fresh to strong easterly winds with speeds of 45 km per hour to 55 km per hour, gusting up to 65 km per hour over the Lao and Lomaiviti group, Kandavu and the nearby smaller islands is forecast. And as we look forward to Monday, few showers over the interior and east part, eastern parts of the larger islands are expected. It should be mainly fine elsewhere. And recapping the main stories. Police report lodged against Bulitavu. Bulitavu apologizes and calls made to remove Bulitavu from Sedelpa. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, do you agree with Sodelpa that non itoke Fijian citizens are Bulangi or visitors? Visit our FPC website to answer. You can always send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. And that was your FPC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. And I'm from Kadavi and Mirchi FM, it's hot.
हम आ चले नसोरी से मिर्ची एफ एम बहुत जुलूम हाय हम शारा प्रकाश बात करते हैं